An Irish airman foresees his death by W.B. Yeats. Yes. Y-E-A-T-S, but pronounced Yeats. You know why? Because he is Irish. And the Irish language may be English, but it's very, very different. So we are looking at a poem which tells us very clearly what the theme is about. An Irish airman foresees his death. We are in Ireland and we are talking about the movement for their own independence from UK. The period is the beginning of the 20th century. You may well wonder, is Irish poetry really so different? I do want to tell you that Irish poetry probably began as early as the 7th century. But it was much later that we look at Stanish James O'Grady, etc. as people who set into motion a separate stream of English literature, which we call Irish literature. W.B. Yeats, 1865 to 1939, he won the Nobel Prize in 1923. He was a poet as well as a dramatist, a Protestant Anglo-Irish community. He was in the minority. I believe he and his wife loved seances. You know, they could speak to their, uh, speak to the ghosts of their forefathers, etc. Supposed to be quite popular. He was particular about maintaining his cultural roots the Irish cultural roots. This interest in occultism got him friends, special friends. He was supposed to have been in love with Maud Gorn, who does figure in many of his poems, but as she was already married, the affair didn't go any further. Some of his important poems are In the Seven Woods, Responsibilities, The Green Helmet, The Tower, the winding stair, etc. I must mention that he was very much interested in the Irish War of Independence. The 1916 Easter Uprising gave rise to a poem called Easter 1916. He had many friends in the Irish Army and Air Force and one important person was Robert Gregory, who died at the young age of 36 in war. Automatically, one realizes that the major themes in many of his poems are war and death, as we shall see in today's poem, An Irish Airman Foresees His Death. I know that I shall meet my fate somewhere among the clouds above. Just imagine, the poem begins with the realization that he will die in war. The poem goes on to talk about war and sadly, tragically, I think all of us are aware with the world situation today that those who actually fight the war are not those who decide to fight the war. So let me read those two lines again. I know that I shall meet my fate somewhere among the clouds above. And very touching to me are the next two lines. Those that I fight, I do not hate. Those that I guard, I do not love. I'm forced into this war. Why am I fighting this war? Because I've joined the Air Force. Do I really want to protect the people whom I'm protecting? I don't really care. As the poem goes on, we will see how strong this feeling is in the poet W.B. Yeats. But I must repeat that this is considered to be a kind of a funeral poem, a kind of memorial to his dear friend Robert Gregory, who was an Irish airman. And whether he foresaw his death or not, 
he did die in battle. Those that I fight, I do not hate. Those that I guard, I do not love. My country is skill cut and cross. No likely end could bring them laws. Why? Because my countrymen are Kilkartan's poor. Kilkartan is actually a place in Galway on the western coast of Ireland. So he's talking about the place from which he comes. I would say I'm from Ahmedabad and all that I care about is Ahmedabad, the people of Ahmedabad. He's saying something like that when he says, my countrymen, Kilkartan's poor. No likely end could bring them laws or leave them happier than before. Is this war going to make any change in their lives? Obviously not. Why am I fighting? Why am I going to war? Nor law, nor duty bade me fight. Nor public men, nor cheering crowds. I'm not fighting for honor. I'm not fighting for awards. Why am I fighting? And then he says, a lonely impulse of denial drove to this tumult in the clouds. Let me read that again. A lonely impulse of delight. Oh, what great fun it would be to go up into the clouds. Just imagine, here is an airman who is talking about why he's in the war. And he says it was just a momentary impulse that probably made me join the Air Force. At each moment in life, I think we have the past the present and the future coalescing into one. Well, Yeats tells us, I balanced all, brought all to mind. The years to come seemed waste of breath, a waste of breath, the years behind. What a thing to admit. You are in the present, you're looking at the past and you're saying you've achieved nothing. You look at the future and you say you're not going to achieve anything at all. So, what am I going to do? In balance with this life, this death, dying is just the same as living. I know that I shall meet my fate somewhere among the clouds above. In a poem which is so touching, I wonder what kinds of figures of speech could we have, need we have? And honestly, there aren't too many in this poem. The entire poem is written in a continuous 16 lines. I can't try and break it into stanzas. Of course, there is alliteration. And then there is anaphora. Do you remember when succeeding lines begin with the same word? So, for example, you have my, my, or you have nor, nor. So, anaphora is there, but otherwise not too many figures of speech. The tone is somber. The theme is war and death. Having read the poem, having heard the poem, what are we left with? We are left with the idea that this is a poem about war, but I think more it is about the futility of war. What does war achieve? Does it achieve anything at all? And if this poet is able to bring it to us ever so touchingly, the futility of war. I think we, when we read a poem, we are impressed by the poem, probably by the theme. And here is one poem where the theme is very important. I like this poem because it touches one of the innermost recesses of my heart, especially today as we sit and watch the gory details of war in different parts of the world. I think our heart goes out to all those soldiers. Here, of course, it is the Irish airman. But is it not true of anyone and everyone who fights a war which he did not decide should be fought.